Hello lovelies, how are you all doing today? I hope you're well. Oh, I'm a bit sort of hot and sweaty and dishevelled, excuse my dishevelledness. Just got back from shopping. Oh, what's in the bag today, Bibby? Come on to that in a second. Yeah, phew, it's those stairs. By the time I get up to the top of the stairs, I'm sweating buckets. Okay, now, um, this is shopping from one, two, three, it's from four different shops. So I've actually done my little thing on a piece of paper rather than all, all my different receipts, just to make it clearer. And, and that's very typical for me, uh, that I go to numerous different shops when I do my shopping. And I really like that. I mean, part of it is, uh, it's a bit of exercise. Now, I hate walking these days. I hate it. But I try to do it. I try to go out and walk a little bit every single day, you know, just keep everything moving. Um, and for shopping, by the time I've gone right down to the bottom of the hill and then all the way back up again, you know, it is keeping my legs moving, even though my 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 head is screaming at me, stop moving, because moving hurts. Anyway, so partly it's a bit of exercise. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Um, partly it's because different shops are offering me different things. I want, you know, uh, the, I can't get everything I want in one shop. Partly it's that I just like being out and about in my neighbourhood because invariably I, I, you know, I bump into friends and have a natter, have a catch up, find out everybody's baby news or grandbaby news or garden news or dog news, <laughs> you know. I'm part of a community so it's nice to be out there getting a bit of that. Um, so, but also, so for instance, this shop I've done today, I've used two chain supermarkets national supermarkets if you like but i've also used two shops which are completely independent little teeny tiny family run places which are only on my high street you may have similar on your high street but my versions they're literally just on my high street so every time i spend with them i know it's going to that family brilliant so yeah i like to have it's a bit of a you know, I suppose, I was going to say if you were in a hurry, if you're working all week, it might not be practical. But actually, this is how I shopped even when I was working. It's just an excuse to bump into people and natter on the high street. Anyway, so, my grand total today, I have an allowance of £12 a week that I give myself. And that's for everything. Food, clothes, stationery, shoes everything. Uh, if you saw the last um, shopping video I did a few weeks ago, I bought that battery charger um, pack. It was 20 quid. So sometimes I do go over my £12, but that will be based on if in the preceding weeks I haven't used my full 12 quid. That's the perfect case today. So last week I spent £9 8p, so it left me with quick maths £2.92 extra. So in essence, I had £14.92 to spend today. I'm not that strict about it, to be honest. I generally, I kind of think in terms of a tenner still. Um, uh, so, I, you know, I get my cash out of, the, out of the bank. I leave the change, either I leave it in my purse or I might put it in my, you know, penny jar or whatever it is. But... I have a good idea from week to week if if it's a week where I'm going to overspend. I know therefore that the previous week I need to either underspend the previous week or the following week needs to be an underspend. And I kind of knew that I was going to have an overspend today because I've got a big ticket item today. It's one of the really expensive things. Plus I got something that you could say I don't really need right now. I could have bought it next week, but I thought, you know what, I'm out and about today. I'll get it today. And because last week I underspent. So, what did you buy this week, Vivi? Let's get the bag of goodies out. Ooh, it's quite heavy. Crinkle, crinkle. So, 
my first port of call <laughs> got mud in it there's mud in this bag I, I think I brought home spuds in it the other day uh, my first port of call was my little local health food shop it's the shop I live above and because of that because we're good neighbors I get a little loyalty discount I get 10% off which you know it's quite expensive stuff in there but it's like oh okay well with the 10% it makes it comparable with say if I was buying from some big company online but you know if I buy online that means oh I've got to wait for a delivery what if it's a day what if it's the only dry day that week and I want to go to the garden I don't want to wait for a delivery also I'm lining some big conglomerates you know pockets I prefer, even if it's a little bit more, I prefer to do this downstairs locally, support them. And they support me back by giving me 10% off. So I bought two items. This is my expensive one. This is the um, Marigold Wheel. It's a dried stock powder. I get the reduced salt version. The salt in my vegetables, they take it out of the ground. Now, I've had people over the years say to me, oh, Vivi, you should make your own stock. Well, you know what? Every now and again, I do. When I can, I do. So, you know, in the, in the late spring and early summer, if I'm thinning things like fennel or carrots, I haven't been able to grow carrots for two years for some unknown reason, but when I'm doing thinnings, if I, maybe I'm thinning spinach, lettuce, whatever it is, any of my thinnings, I'll chuck those in the stock pot and do it. But the fact of the matter is, uh, I just don't grow enough food to sacrifice some of it to making stock. Also, it's a time thing. So, for instance, um, when you saw my day in the life video, I'm quite busy all day and I'm suddenly thinking, oh, it's lunchtime, I'm hungry, quick, make some soup. If I had to stop in my tracks and think, right, quick, make some stock and then make some soup, <laughs> You know, it just wouldn't work. So I always have this uh, dried stock powder in the cupboard. Oh, the other thing about today's shop that it kind of struck me as I was doing it is you can see the seasonal change in my shopping as well. My, my eating is, oh, you suddenly see that bright light. I look like I'm being lit from below, don't I? It's, the sun came out momentarily and was reflecting off the light floor and bouncing up at me. Mm. So yeah, my, my eating is very seasonal. Of course it is because I'm eating the stuff that I grow. Uh, and, and there is definitely a seasonal change in here because the stock, I'm well and truly into soup season. And that's the thing, I make so much soup. I'll pretty much, I'll almost have soup every day from now right through till April, May next year. So I get through loads of this. Now, there is a bigger version of this. So sorry, I should say this is £6.39. I'm not going to translate into dollars today. The dollar amount, it's kind of, at the moment, it's almost the same. So £6.39, around about $6.00. There is a big, big pot of it you can buy and I might save up for it because it's £19 and I think it's the equivalent of four of these. So four of these will be 24, 25 quid. It's quite a big saving. Yeah, that's a good thing to save up for actually. Okay, so that's the stock. Um, that'll be gone quite soon. Anyway, then the other thing I bought from them is oh, lovely pearl barley. I adore pearl barley. Again, this is that seasonal change. This will be going in soups. Pearl barley is a wonderful grain. Um, it's high in fibre, so it's really good for our you know, digestive health. The thing about pearl barley is it takes quite a while to digest it and so it helps us to feel full for longer but it's also one of those grains that our body actually finds it difficult to extract the nutrient from so to help that soak your barley soak 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 now when i'm cooking it in a soup i will cook this alone 
uh, first and it might be in that water in that stock for a, a good hour or so and quite often with the soup by the next day you'll see it plumps up even more it just makes it a little bit easier to digest so if you've had it before and you, you feel like you've struggled to digest it soak it that will help but yeah it's great it helps us to lower cholesterol it's low GI it helps to lower GI so it's a great grain for diabetics it helps to lower blood pressure it's a really good vascular health grain uh, you know it can help reduce risk of heart disease uh, of stroke so yeah I love it anything you know lowering cholesterol lowering blood pressure as we get older those are things we need to think about so it's a fab grain I love it that's a half a kilo for £1.44 it is organic there was a non-organic version and it was £1.40 <laughs> I thought well I might as well have the organic again it's something if you have the capacity financially and the space in your kitchen to buy in bulk if you buy in bulk that will make it that will reduce the cost I don't have the space uh, and I don't have the money at the moment so together they came to £7.83 but with my little discount it came to £7 5p so about $7 so that was my big ticket item this week. It's rare that I spend more than two pounds on anything each week. Occasionally, you know, if I'm buying oil, that would be another of my big tickets. But anyway, so six quid, yikes. It's gonna last for ages though. Ah, oh, good, I'm glad I'm talking about this because it needs to go in the fridge. Butter, again. So I had to go to Tesco for this. I went to Lidl, they didn't have any. This is again that kind of, this seasonal change. You know, we all need fats in our diet. Our brain needs fat, fats. So throughout, I would say 99% of my cooking, eating, what have you, um, is olive oil. I love my olive oil, it's great for skin, all the, you know, it's just a great, great fat to use. But as we go into winter, there are a couple of dishes I make that I like to have my butter in. And the reason I say seasonal, partly it's because it's the sort of stuff I cook in winter, but also if you think about origins of our different food items, you know, if you think of olive oil, we think of the Mediterranean, we think of those warm countries, those gorgeous salad diets, beans in oil, oh, love, 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 love. But as we head north, as we come north in Europe into sort of northern France and Germany and the UK, we are more likely to use butter as our fat. So yeah, it's a northern, it's a northern thing. I don't mean northern as in I'm a northern lass. It's a northern European thing. We go for our butter in the winter. That was, yikes, I haven't bought butter for a year. Two pounds ten. I think if you went to Lidl, you could maybe get butter for about a pound fifty. I'm not sure. They didn't have any. So let's now. I'm going to move to Lidl. I'm just going to do this one straight away because it's. Uh, I want to pop it in the fridge with the butter. Oh no! Actually, I went to Lidl for one thing on purpose. Kidney beans. Uh, I've been using kidney beans for my beet burgers yes I'm going to do a video of the recipe for you actually I might have done it already and you might have seen it already if if I haven't by the time you see this I'll get on with it this is their cheapy cheap cheap ones for 33 pence I had been doing it with the 55 pence ones but I thought I'll try the 33p ones uh I could actually make the beet burgers with any beans. I think, oh, use any of my beans. But you all know by now, it was a terrible year for beans this year. So I'm going to have to buy beans anyway. So I might as well buy red kidney beans. 33 pence. Now, while I was there, how does that... Oh, by the way, because folk keep asking, that tray at the back with the white bottles with the blue lids... It's my vitamin supplements, that's all it is. It's vitamin D because it, apparently I cannot make vitamin D. Vitamin K to go with the vitamin D. There's some sage, I've been trying sage because I've been so hot. 
but having tried it for three and a half months now, it's making no difference. That one, I won't renew it. Uh, but yeah, that's all it is. Just some supplements. And my <clears throat> B-complex, because that's one thing that a vegetarian diet can lack. Maybe I'm not lacking in it, but it's just that sort of security net for me. <clears throat> so, sorry, back to little. So I went in to get the kidney beans. And as I came through the front door, it's all right there in a big basket. It's a treat. Crumpets, oh my goodness. Oh, crumpets, yummy, yummy crumpets. Again, this is a bit of a wintry thing, isn't it? So these are 39p. I was gobsmacked. They do, I think, is it Warburton's, something like that, that are over a quid. So I thought, you know what, 39p, there'll be three portions and they'll have two at a time. That's 13p for two as, as a little sort of afternoon tea treat thing, you know, if it's a really miserable day. If I've been indoors all day, I've been set, whoop, like if I'm, it's a very crinkly shop this week. If it's been, you know, if it's, oh, look, I don't need to make excuses. Every now and again, I like to have a treat. And to go on it, I am so chuffed. Little don't normally have this. It's not something I see in any of my local shops. It's a cheese, and it's my second favourite cheese in the whole world. My number one favourite cheese is, of course, Lancashire cheese, because <laughs> I'm from Lancashire. Okay, if you're outside of the UK, Lancashire is a county in the northwest of the UK. We make a cheese up there that's a lovely white crumbly cheese. It's very mild, but it's got a nice tang to it. Our neighbours to the south, Cheshire, that's where our Richard's from, they also do a white crumbly cheese called Cheshire. We just call them Lancashire, Cheshire. Never see it round here. Maybe if I went to that massive, massive big Sainsbury's, they'd have it, but not round here. Anyway, my second favouritest cheese for all you Wallace and Gromit fans, Wensydale, little hand Wensydale. And it's, this is the thing you see, you, you do see Wensydale at this time of year, kind of Christmassy cheeses, but they, they fill it with all sorts of rubbish like cranberries or apricot pieces. They just put lumps of fruit in it stop mocking around with cheese <laughs> anyway i saw this and i thought i'm gonna have a bit of wensleydale on my crumpets a lovely little bit of wensleydale grommet that's a really really naughty treat that was one pound 55 but you see this this is the thing um i grow so much of my own food that I can allow these little treats and I know that for folk who don't have anywhere to grow any food this would seem like a most ridiculous spend it's just not necessary no it's not necessary it's a blimmin' treat because you know what I don't have many I deserve a few now just to say on that I've got one last thing in the bag that's not a food thing so you can see all that there can't you there we go that's my week's shopping that's my week's Food shopping, of course, that will last for weeks and weeks and weeks on end. That should last months. How can you possibly live on that for a week, Vivi? People always say to me, but where's the food in your food shop? My food is in the garden. It's in the shed. Some of it's under the bed. Some of it's on windowsills. Some of it's in the freezer. Uh, if I bought, if, if I put together all the... All the food, it wouldn't fit in the kitchen at the moment. So that's the thing. This is just little bits to supplement my the bulk of what I grow. So I've <laughs> just stopped you for a minute because I thought, you know, this is the kind of perfect example. In the fridge at the moment, I've got three of these. Can you see that? That's my lovely um, cream of courgette and potato with cardamom soup. So I did a big batch again yesterday. There's three in the freezer, three in the fridge. Then this, so that'll be for in a minute for my lunch. Then that, can you make it out? There's a couple separated by a piece of paper. That's beet burgers. That will be for my supper tonight with, I've got some 
Uh, I've got some potatoes. I think I'm gonna have to go back to the garden and dig some more potatoes up. But I've got some potatoes and I'll do a, a, a tomato beany reduction. So it's like not quite baked beans, but my version. So yeah, there's, I have, oh, excuse me. When I go shopping, that's not all I'm going to eat this week, of course not. I mean, literally, I just put my hand out anywhere in the kitchen. There's food, there's stuff from the garden. So, um, yeah, good shop. Like I said, it came to £13.42, but so far I've only shown you £11.42's worth. I spent another £2. This is going to make me laugh. This does make me laugh. It's worth it for my... It was worth buying these just to make me giggle. I did a little inventory the other day of the stock I have of these things already and I thought it was probably wise to buy some extra. See what I bought? All of you Brits of a certain age will know. Well, you'll be, you'll be saying the sketch in your head. I bought four candles, not four candles, four candles, <laughs> four candles. I went into the shop and I said, can I have four candles, please? You didn't get it, you didn't get the joke, because it's an all sorts shop. But great, you know, I can buy candles, at least. Look, they were a couple of quid, 50p each. Um, I'm sure if I bought a big box in bulk, it would work out cheaper. But that'll do me for now. And it's just kind of, I mean, I don't use candles very much, you know, in terms of, you know, for ambiance or whatever. I use tea lights with my oil diffuser. But I just thought, you know, I'm not being a, I'm not being a doom monger, a gloom monger, whatever it is, but just in case we have any power cuts this winter, I, ha I do regularly have power cuts here, nothing to do with, you know, money crisis anything like that but just because my substation where my electricity comes from just seems to overheat every now and again so i thought yeah good idea stock up on some candles great i can buy them loose no packaging no waste <laughs> and i got to walk in there and say have you got four candles please four candles four candles oh joy 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 find the joy in the little things so that's it that's my shop this week 13 pounds and 42 p um but like i said the we on will last for weeks on end i reckon the pearl barley i don't know it depends what i make but that could easily last a month it might even stretch a bit longer um we'll see and i'm really i'm going to you know, this is supposed to be a treat for later in the week. Crumpets with a bit of cheese, but I might turn you all off and get on with it right now. Uh, no, there's other things to do first. Earn your treat, earn your treat, and then you can enjoy it. Okay, my lovelies. Uh, oh, I need to calm down now after that. I should lap up the stairs. Thank you for joining me today for my comedy, for comedy shopping. That's priceless, isn't it? You know what I'm going to do now? Actually, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go online and I'm going to bring that sketch up. If, you, if you're outside of the UK and you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, because like I said, pretty much every single Brit of my age and older will know it's the two Ronnies, four candles, four candles sketch where... One of them goes into a sort of an old fashioned hardware ironmongery shop, which is so like the one I've got on my high street here. I love it. Yeah, one of them goes into the shop and the conversation starts with them asking for four candles. So if you go online and look up the two Ronnie's four candles sketch, there you go. That's your little treat for later on. I'm grinning thinking about it. All right, lovelies, um, happy being out and about on your high streets. Um, you know, make the most of your high streets. Use them. Don't always go out of town. And yeah, I know sometimes you can go out of town, bulk centres, it's cheaper. But, you know, as and when you can, use your own high street, pop in and out, get to know your shopkeepers, 
get to the point where you have conversations when you go shopping. Enjoy being out and about and seeing your friends, acquaintances, what have you. And hopefully find some bargains along the way. All right, lovelies, until the next one, I shall bid you a very fond farewell for now. Um, what will we do next? No idea. We'll see what happens. <laughs> so until then, look after yourselves. Cheerio.